welcome to another episode of the Will and Twine Fiber Studio Knitting Podcast. My name is Jule and I'm the dyer and maker behind Will and Twine Fiber Studio, which is a small creative space located here in northern Germany, where I play with natural dyes and natural yarns. Um, if you're new here, welcome. I'm so happy that you found your way into my little corner of YouTube. And if you're a returning viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you are all here and today I want to introduce you to a new yarn that we are uh, releasing very soon. And I know it has been quite a while until I've uh, recorded a proper knitting episode, um, but I'm happy to say that I am back to knitting and I did find a bit more time to knit uh, recently so I really hope that I'll find the time to record a proper update and um, you know knitting episode um, very soon. But for today I want to introduce you to a new yarn base that I'm very very happy about and so without further ado let me give you a bit of an overview of what we're talking about today. Okay. A little overview on what we are talking about today. So this video is a bit more of an intro to a new yarn and those of you who are new here I like to do these things just to give you a bit of an overview of uh, how this yarn behaves, show you some samples and give you a bit more of an idea of how it you know feels like and behaves like when being knitted up. Um, and there will also be um, dedicated episodes um, for shop updates where we will have this yarn um, and then I will show colorways like separately um, but this is just the intro to um, this new yarn and I will start out with giving you a bit of an overview of um, you know meter rich fiber content how it was made where it was made um, then we'll switch over to a couple of swatches and samples just so you can get an idea of how it looks knitted up and in the end I will also have a little list of curated patterns that I think would be lovely to be knit in this yarn and so just in case you're curious I have a couple of um, yeah, patterns curated for you so you can have a bit of inspiration on what to do with this lovely new yarn. So let me start out with the little bit of the intro section. So this new yarn um, is called linen uh, but written with two ends. I'm going to put it somewhere here into the frame and um, that is the middle uh, high German word for the plant that makes um, the linen fiber so that's like the linen um, flax plant if you want to say it that way um, and I kind of wanted to give it um, a historical and kind of you know a name that has um, a local sound kind of um, because uh, of how the whole history of linen in this country has been because um, like we, had, we didn't have a big uh, flax industry here in Germany as like for example Lithuania or Belgium but uh, the use of linen um, has been you know can be dated back to something like the 800s and uh, so linen has been around for pretty much forever and I kind of love that it's such a um, yeah in the textile world such an old and memorable fiber so I kind of wanted to give it a name that has to do with like the um, with like its history and kind of um, you know appreciate how long it's been along uh, it's been around and that's why it's called linen in the old you know middle high German um, uh, way of writing it. Um, so the new base is a blend of, uh, as the name might suggest, linen and wool. So we are having a 25% um, natural unbleached linen fibers and 75% uh, of blue faced Leicester. And the whole thing about um, the curation, or how do you say that? Is that even a word? Like how the how this blend came to life was that I have a very deep love for the natural shade of unbleached um, linen fibers and whenever I sew a dress for myself or I'm you know thinking of getting something that has a fabric um, surface I 
90% of the time I'll be choosing the natural unbleached linen. And so I kind of thought that it would be nice to keep that shade in the finished yarn. But of course the content is only 25% uh, of the linen in it and so it would not really resemble the same shade if I had just mixed it with like for example a, a white fleece. And so I went uh, on a little, <laughs> I don't know, I, I, I went on a little researching journey and found out that there actually is um, naturally colored blue face Leicester and that was the sheep breed I wanted to go with because the flax fibers they can be a little more harsh, I don't want to say harsh, but they are a bit more less flexible and less voluminous than for example a woolen fiber and to result in like a still very soft um, yarn that could be worn next to skin, at least for my liking, um, I tried to blend it with a considered very soft kind of sheep breed just so we can have it um, as a suitable summer yarn. Um, and so yeah, I found the, out that there is some uh, naturally colored blue face Leicester fleeces and um, it had this beautiful natural oatmeal shade. Um, I don't know if I still have the fiber sample with me, but if I do, I'm going to pop a little um, video section in here. And if not, I'm trying to maybe find it and post on Instagram about it because it was just mesmerizing how the flax fiber and the oatmeal linen, uh, the oatmeal blue face Leicester just matched very well. And um, yeah, so we decided to go for that fiber blend and I couldn't be happier with the result, both color and touch wise. Um, because I don't know, for me, with these kind of plant fibers in a yarn. I don't like a lot of blends that have plant fibers in it and generally I only like the ones with linen because I don't know that's something I, I do enjoy the touch of but many blends for example also with cotton or so is not really what I enjoy. I know there are a lot of beautiful cotton uh, wool blends but I'm just it's just my personal <laughs> thing that I don't really like it. And uh, so I was really pleasantly surprised at how much I like the handle of this and yeah I guess without further ado let me show you how it looks like. So um, we will have this yarn base in two weights so it will be available in um, a four ply and a DK version. Um, just because I thought, I mean, of course, the lighter the yarn, the more summer appropriate it would naturally be. But I kind of also thought that maybe for like, it's not just a summer yarn because the linen content is not too, too high. So it's not like too summery. And I think it's nice to also have it suitable for like transition pieces into autumn. Um, because that's definitely what it's very suited for, I guess. And so with the DK weight yarn it might be a bit easier to also knit like cardigans or lighter weight shawls or whatever um, that could go perfectly for the transition transition between summer and autumn. So yeah, these were the thoughts behind it all. And now, without further ado, um, let me show them to you. So th this is the new linen blend. And as you can see, it has this beautiful natural very neutral coolish beige undertone. So this is the fault play version and this is the DK or I should say fingering because I think this is more well known. And if you are a bit confused about why these skeins look so small and slim that is because in this spinning run we decided to go for 50 gram skeins instead of 100 grams. Um, just to make it a bit more you know for smaller summer projects we thought this might be quite handy. Although I have to admit that labeling all these and <laughs> skeining them, <laughs> I kind of underestimated how much more time it takes for 50 gram skeins than it does for 100 grams, like to achieve the same amount. But anyhow, it's it's very enjoyable to work with this, and it's just, you know, I love these slightly smaller skeins. They are just, I don't know, quite pretty, and it's nice to have a change every now and then. As you can see, in the skein already it has a bit of a drape as you can see so it's not like a stiff 
woolen spun skein would be. It has a bit of a drape and that is definitely what I hoped it would have and it turned out very perfect in that sense. And also I feel you can knit this on a lot of gauges depending on what you want to go for. Like if you want to go for a very loosely knitted gauge on like a summer top or so, it works just as well as a slightly tighter gauge. So I'm very happy about that. At least for this admin section, I wanted to talk you through the different yarn weights of this and the makeup of the yarn. So the four ply version is a fingering weight yarn with 200 meters per 50 grams. So that equals a 400 meters per 100 grams, with, which is a pretty standard fingering weight. And that one is a worsted spun two ply. So um, two plies of yarn or two singles being plied together, resulting in a slightly you know, accentuated twist. And for the DK version, we have a three ply um, resulting in a slightly rounder, um, how do you say, rounder thread, I would say. And that one is 115 meters per 50 grams, so 230 meters per 100 grams. Um, just so you know about the yarn weights, and as I said, that one is a three ply. Um, also worse to spun, of course. Both are, both are spun the same way. And yeah, I guess without further ado, let me show you a couple of swatches. But speaking about gauges, let me show you some swatches. Um, so this one is the four ply uh, version of the new linen blend. And as you can see, knitted up, I don't know if it's visible, but you can see those little flex um, that I particularly love because it has almost like not really a tweedy character but it has a lot of life to the fabric I guess and you can see it's still quite bouncy um, so yeah that is the four ply swatch and that one is or oh, I should maybe tell this one is worked on 3.5 millimeter needles, so not necessarily a super open gauge for a four ply weight yarn, but um, yeah, also not a very tight one. And just for some comparison, a slightly tighter knitted swatch in the DK on a 3.75 millimeter needle, so this is the DK version. Very bouncy and stretchy still as well. I'm sorry, I'm getting a call. Hang on. Sorry, I'm back. Um, there was a call. Um, <laughs> this happens. I want to be very real with you. <laughs> but yeah, this is the summer yarn in the 3.5, uh, 75 millimeter needle in a DK weight. And you can see how lovely and bouncy and stretchy it is. And also how, I don't know if that's visible, but how nice the drape is. I'm going to show that in a sample in a second, so I hope that's going to be a bit easier to see. But yeah, these are the swatches of the um, new linen blend. And next up, let me show you what we've worked uh, sample-wise in this new yarn, just so you can see a bit better how it behaves. So the first sample I want to show you is uh, a pretty classic summer tea because I thought that was what the yarn was initially designed to be, like kind of a summery, summer appropriate um, yarn. And this one is the Gimme the Tea uh, t-shirt pattern by my friend Jenny Ansa of Kote Kotoni. And this is just a very easy basic raglan construction top um, and this one is knitted in the DK weight version and it has these beautiful little I don't know if you can see but these beautiful folded hems uh, for the cuffs and also for the neckline as well as the bottom edge and I think in this size of a fabric, let's say swatch, um, you can totally see uh, these little flecks that I mentioned. And these are just um, some of the fibers that are, you know, slightly darker than the rest of it all. And 
I actually really enjoy this because it really shows that this has not been processed um, too much and that the natural shades can still play um, with each other. And this one, um, this sample also shows how beautifully drapey the yarn is. I don't know if you can see if I, you know, bounce it a bit like this, but it's, you know, it's very flowy and not stiff at all, um, which is what I really like. And this one was knitted in size 4, which is pretty much my size, and it's very generously um, shaped, so there is a lot of positive ease, which, which is what I like. And it has a pretty cropped um, shape, um, which is great for, you know, my personal body shape because I'm a very short person and I like to wear high-waisted things and dresses and this is much more wearable for me than it is, for example, for, um, as it is uh, for like a longer version because those longer versions can sometimes um, just sit uncomfortably in some, some areas. So this one is wonderful. Um, I can really recommend the pattern. There are two different weight versions if I remember correctly. So there's like a light fingering plus a lace and then a fingering plus a lace resulting in something like a heavy DK, a heavy sport to DK weight and that is the version that we went for for this sample. Um, the color is just the undyed natural shade and uh, I just we just weighed um, this sample and it's around 350 grams. I think it was 330 or something. So you would uh, need 350 grams for, let's say, a size 4. Um, so that would resemble um, 7 skeins of the 50 gram um, DK weight. I I just, I don't know how to you know, stress this enough because we usually just have the 100 grams and I just really hope that people will, you know, remember that these are 50 grams so you will need double the uh, amount of what you would usually purchase, like not the amount but double the numbers. <laughs> but yeah, this is the Gimme the Tea and it's beautiful, I'm really happy that I have it now and it really showcases the fabric um, of the of the yarn really well, so I'm very happy about that. And now let me show you another little sample. So the next sample is uh, living in my little project bag because it's not finished yet and I'm still working on it. Um, but I also wanted to show this bag because it really uh, suits the whole theme of the natural linen and this is made by Milda of Paya Uta Makes. I hope I'm saying that right. Um, and she is just an awesome artist and she embroiders those natural linen pouches. And so if you don't know her, check her out. I just bought this with my own money. There is no sponsorship or anything involved. I just wanted to share because it also kind of, you know, fits the theme of a linen yarn. <laughs> and in this one, I have my second sample that does not really look like much yet, but I'm working on it. Um, I just wanted to show something where we have a little bit of a different texture than just a uh, stock in it stitch. So this one is my current work in progress, which is the Nukbulan shawl by Sari Nordlund. And it's I don't know if you can see that, but it's going to become, you know, branches of flowers and at the top, you know, it's going to spread out even further and at the top you will see the blossoms. And it's just a beautiful shawl and I'm working this one in the four ply weight of the new linen base. And it's it's one of those patterns where you feel like just one more row, you know, it's very you kind of have to concentrate because the pattern is both worked on um, the front and the back. So it's not like with some lace patterns, you know, it's just on the right side that you work the lace panel and then the the wrong side is just working as established. But with this one, it's a bit 
you, you need to concentrate a little bit, but it's really worth it. And it's, I don't know, it's really engaging. And I, I just pulled out the bubbles a little bit more because they are kind of um, slightly smaller and they are disappearing in the fabric a little bit, but I will block them out and then they will be much more visible. But I think it's very nice for shawls, the new blend, because it's, you know, elastic and drapey at the same time. And I can imagine this blocking out absolutely beautifully while still holding its shape when you wear it. So, yeah, I'm really excited for this one to continue on this one. It's gonna take me a while still. Um, and I always have to keep like a slightly easier side project. Um, but it's very enjoyable to work on and I can't wait to finish. Um, also, this colorway is the Hawthorne colorway, which we, I think we debuted this one in the last shop update in the June collection. We had this one on other bases, but I liked it so much that I wanted to work it on the new linen base. And this is just how it works out. So one of the beautiful things about this base, um, speaking of colors right now, uh, is that, you know, linen uh, or flax is uh, not a protein fiber, but a cellulose fiber. And these um, fibers usually need a slightly different pretreatment um, to be dyed in the same way as wool does, which is a protein fiber. And what I was kind of hoping for with blending the two different fiber types is that it would you know, the linen would not pick up the dye in the same way as um, the wool does. And so that it would create kind of like a heathered effect. And I can show you on one of the colorways that we'll be bringing out for this update. And I hope it's visible on camera. But it does turn out to be slightly heathered, especially in the darker colorways where you can see the contrast a bit better. But this is what I was... can you focus camera? This is what I was hoping for and I'm extremely happy that it worked out in the way I hoped it would be. So yeah, the slightly heathered effect is definitely something that I really enjoyed while dyeing it because it's something very special, I guess. So yeah, this one is my Nupolan shawl. I'm currently on my second 50 gram skein, so one brings you pretty far in the four play base because it's um, 200 meters per 100 grams. And so, yeah, it is going quite far. So far about this sample, um, next up, let me share a couple of pattern suggestions with you. About pattern suggestions, um, excuse me if I'm looking down here because I need to check my notes every now and then. Um, but I'm wondering if it's getting a little bit too dark over here. As always when I film we're having kind of unpredictable weather, so <laughs> I feel like this is, I don't know, it happens all the time. But um, with the pattern suggestions let me tell you a couple of nice patterns that I think would work great with this yarn. This is all just my personal um, my personal ideas. I have not been asked by anyone to feature them in this video or to recommend the patterns or anything. It's just I went browsing uh, on Ravelry and um, also in my, you know, saved kind of posts you know, on Instagram where I sometimes try to keep track of patterns that I enjoy. And I will group the, these in the four ply and the DK weight version. Um, and all of these designers are size inclusive designers, which is always important to me, just so I can be as inclusive in my work as I can be. And I will link them all below in the little column um, with Ravelry links. So just in case you cannot use Ravelry uh, or don't want to use Ravelry, which is perfectly fine, um, just copy the names that I put in front of the links and Google them to see if there may, might be a different platform that the designer has. Um, the pattern on. I just cannot link all of them because it would be um, a lot of mess in my show notes. So I guess that's not really helpful. Um, but I will put all the pattern names in somewhere on the screen as well just so you can read along. And without further ado, let me start out with of course the Nupulan shawl by uh, 
Sari Nordlund, which I just showed you, which is this beautiful floral um, shawl um, in the faux ply version. Then uh, a very uh, recent release by Aimisha that is the slightly sassy V, which is um, a beautiful V-neck sweater, um, lightweight and, you know, just a very classic shape, but with a very nice shaping and very nice um, fit, uh, I suppose. Uh, as well as the Olong tank by Aimisha that is uh, a more classic, oversized, summer top with um, a very uh, intricate lace a panel going down the front of the whole top and I feel like this one has been pretty popular earlier this summer and it's beautiful um, and I think it would be very nice um, in one of the fresh summery colors that we just recently dyed on the um, linen fall ply base. Um, next up <laughs> I want to share a little pattern that I was very influenced um, to include next uh, in this next uh, pattern suggestions video because I was at Wollen Berlin, uh, Wollen, no, Bedding Wool Weekend organized by Wollen Berlin um, last week, uh, which was a small um, fiber and yarn festival in Berlin. And uh, it was kind of a theme that uh, many of the ladies of the staff from Wollen Berlin had knitted this one in a linen yarn and I saw them all wearing these and I was, every time I was like is that the one as well <laughs> and all of them wore them and I'm very heavily influenced to knit myself one because I absolutely love the fit and the kind of oversized style and that one is the Taro or Taro Tea by Kiyomi Bergen um, it's an oversized t-shirt with like a satin uh, sleeve and just very boxy beautiful fit um, very minimalistic and right up my alley when it comes to these kind of oversized minimalistic style patterns I just love these personally so I wanted to include it and I think it would be nice because the drape is important for this uh, pattern I feel it has to be kind of drapey to you know have the kind of easy oversized look and I think it would be very nice in the fall play version. So yeah, a big thank you goes out to uh, Mimi of Liebwet and Jan Chicks um, and Nora of Kitzgarn who are wearing these tees all the time. <laughs> and I think Ruta of Wallen Berlin, Berlin also war one on the festival. I don't know, but I was just very influenced <laughs> and now I really want to knit my own. Um, so yeah, big recommendation for that one. I saw it in person, it's a beautiful pattern. Um, speaking of another pattern that I was honored to see in person uh, last weekend, it was the uh, Rokoko top by Sari Nordlund, which is a top version of the Rokoko pullover that she designed earlier on. And it's just um, a tank top with like very slim um, sleeves, how do, you, how do you say, straps, not sleeves, um, and a beautiful, very intricate um, patterned section in the uh, at the top. It's like with bubbles and lace and all these things, but for some reason with, um, with you know, not having sleeves and being just uh, located in the yoke like portion of the whole pattern, I just really loved it, despite me being more of a minimalist person, but I, I saw it in person and I, I was like, oh, this is, you know, this looks like fun to knit and at the same time it's very wearable. Um, I think Sari wore it with uh, like a big oversized linen shirt on top and just, you know, keeping that one open and I don't know, I was very inspired by that. <laughs> so I guess I'd love to make myself one. So the Rococo top would be beautiful in the four ply linen version as well. Um, another one I want to recommend is a recent release as well. I think it was released in spring um, and that one is the Air Tea by uh, Hayley Smedley or Ozetta. And that one is another very minimalistic kind of t-shirt with a pretty clever construction because if I understood correctly you will, you will uh, cast on in the back and then you know knit the front panels and the whole um, neckline and then you join 
you knit the back panel and then you join them in the round to, to knit the tee, if I'm, I don't know. I, I hope I remember this correctly. So the construction is quite clever and you don't end up with like a big shoulder seam that way. So I think it's quite cool and that pattern has been around like everywhere. I've seen it so many times and I think it's perfect. Also for the transition piece because it's not necessarily like uh, like without sleeves and all these things so it could be very nice for like transition at least in the warmer areas. Um, but yeah another uh, very versatile pattern that I want to recommend is the outline tee or the outline tank. It's like a it's like two patterns either in a tank top or in a t-shirt form uh, by Jessie Maid and um, her patterns are just always really clever, you know, quite simple in uh, shape or, or construction, but she adds a lot of shaping and uh, customization options to the patterns, which is always lovely. And for the outline tank or tee, uh, there is this super, I don't know, nerve-wracking thing you do at the end where you rip back a couple of, uh, like one stitch, you, un you unravel that one and it's unraveling through the whole, I don't know, like in, in the front and in some places of the tee and creates this kind of, I don't know how to call this, but it creates this kind of detail that looks really cool in the end. Um, I don't know if I would dare to do it because I, I don't know, I'd get too nervous to do it, but it also looks quite satisfying, so could be a nice project in the end. Um, then also by Jessica Maid, there is the um, ripple camisole, which is a pretty classic fitted uh, top with like ri like a ribbing all over. Um, I can I can imagine that one with like high waisted linen uh, culottes and a nice oversized shirt on top or so. I can imagine that would go really well, and you know. You could knit that one in really fun colors or maybe go for a very minimalistic version. I think it's super versatile in that way. Um, and then I have two more tanks <laughs> because, you know, this is kind of a summer yarn. So I thought it's very appropriate for tank tops and t-shirts. So especially for the, for the lighter weight version, I wanted to include a couple of my favorite um, summer patterns, if I may say so. So uh, the next one is another one by Kiyomi Bergen and that one is the Heia tank, um, which is a pretty minimalistic kind of simple shaped tank top as well. Um, and I just kind of, I love the neckline of that one. So yeah, definitely on my to knit list. Um, as well as the Lupini uh, top, top tank by uh, Jenny Ansa of Gotti Cotoni, which is a little more of a playful tank top. Um, it has a pretty simple shape um, around the neckline and then at the bottom hem it has these little um, lupine uh, patterns that like with bubbles and um, the whole texture just looks like lupines and I just love that. I think it's so summery and I love the little details and I don't know detailing uh, at the hem is something I haven't done so often so I'm pretty interested in trying it. Um, and then last but not least um, I wanted to include another shawl pattern that is kind of also summer appropriate and that would be the Barbara shawl by uh, Gregoria Fibers. Um, there is a small and a large version and the small version is more like a handkerchief kind of shape and I think that would be perfect for summer you know um, when you're sitting outside and you might get a tiny bit of a chilly feeling then you can just wrap it around your neck and um, it will keep you a little warm but not too much and the larger version is just beautiful also for the trans transition into autumn I can really imagine that being super cozy so um, actually thinking if I can <laughs> finish one before autumn comes um, but I have to see I'm going on vacation uh, this summer so there might be some time to knit but Let's see how much I can actually um, finish. Um, but yeah, those were the pattern suggestions for the linen for ply. Next up, I have a couple of suggestions for the linen DK, uh, starting with the Gimme the Tea by uh, Jenny Ansa of Koti Kotori again, uh, which was the sample that I just previously showed. 
Um, followed by another Sally Nordlund pattern. You know that I love her patterns and I feel like she has a great mix of like basics and more intricate patterns. Um, with the olive tank being quite uh, a more minimalistic one and I was actually really influenced um, by Nicola of Cedar Lane whom I met at uh, Wedding Wool Weekend last weekend. Um, and she wore a version out of I think a silk yarn. I don't know but I just love the drape and it was really nice to see. I was generally very influenced seeing a couple of patterns in real life because I feel it's very it's a lot easier to imagine how they might look on you uh, if you see them in real life. So that was very uh, influencing me a lot, let's say that way. Mm. But yeah, that one is really beautiful. And then there is also uh, another sari pattern <laughs> uh, that is the Laulu shawl. Um, that one is another small kind of more on the handkerchief um, uh, size shawl and it's it has a lot of cables running through but it, it looks more difficult than it is so it's very easy to knit and I think it's also very versatile because um, there's a part in the pattern where it says um, which uh, pattern repeat to just uh, lengthen or repeat as many times as you like to increase the size of the shawl so that's very handy depending on what kind of style you'd go for and it's it's a really sweet little pattern. Um, I can really recommend. Um, then there would also be uh, the Laura vest by uh, Irene Lin. I think is her name. I'm going to put it somewhere so you can read it along. Um, I just really love that, and I thought a vest pattern is also something that's very nice for like transition um, between summer and autumn. Uh, so you could wear it like over a shirt or over a dress or so. I think that one would be really pretty for that. Um, same goes for the White Mountains Light. Uh, that one is a pattern by Midori Hirose. And she just recently, um, you know, added the option of a sleeveless option. It's, it's generally a sweater with sle sleeves, but the sleeveless option is really pretty. And it's something between a vest and a tank top, I kind of feel. Um, again, very minimalistic and uh, with, I think it has a little round neckline, which I just really liked in the photo shoot when I saw the pictures. Yeah, so that one is the White Mountain Slide in the sleeveless version. Then I think what also would be really pretty would be the Caprock Tee by Benny Slam or Yamagara, I think is her uh, handle. And that one is just a really beautiful t-shirt with a lacy textured section in the top. Um, and I don't know, I just really felt drawn towards that one. Um, and I think next up we just have a couple shawls. And uh, the first one I want to recommend is The Flowers and Fields by Natalia Milas. Um, that one was in the Making Stories uh, magazine issue 9. And I was lucky to see the sample of this one in person also at the festival last weekend. And that one is beautiful. It has these little flowers, you know, all around the, how do you say, the middle of the shawl. And then there's a lot of garter stitch and it's just, it's very elegant. And I just really liked how it looked. And I can imagine that very well in the drapey uh, linen DK blend. Um, then another shawl that I really liked is the Hidden Paths by Anja Heumann um, and I think Willen Garden is her new Instagram handle if I'm not wrong. I'm going to link it somewhere. Um, but that one is originally designed in a discontinued alpaca wool blend and alpaca is kind of a very drapey fiber as well so I guess it could work pretty well with the linen as well. And that one has a very nice cabled and that one has a very nice cabled section in one part um, and then the rest is pretty plain garter stitch if I'm not mistaken. Anyhow this one has been on my knit list to knit list for quite a while and I really want to do it so I think this yarn could be very perfect for it. Um, I think oh yeah 
Um, maybe I was thinking because this one was originally designed in our BFMS some DK, but I think it could be very nice in the linen version for a bit more drape, and that would be the Home Lobby shawl by Fiber Tales. Um, it's this very classic shawl with uh, the little bees uh, in the bottom. It's very sweet, and I can really imagine it in, in a couple of the warm shades that we just recently dyed on this yarn. So that would be a pretty option as well. So yeah, these were my present suggestions. I just really hope I didn't overwhelm you with all my ideas. I just get really excited whenever there's a new yarn uh, that I can explore. And you know, once I get a feel of it, I'm just getting all the creativity in and I'm feeling so inspired by so many patterns. So I hope it wasn't too overwhelming and that there might be something for you that's interesting. So yeah, I guess that's everything. The first batch of this yarn is going to launch with the July collection, um, July 2023 is maybe what I should say because this video is going to be around for potentially a bit longer. Um, and there's going to be a whole video around um, this collection that I'm going to upload and I'm going to link it somewhere. <laughs> um, but yeah, that is our new linen base. I'm super excited and I hope you love it as much as I do. Um, as always, if any questions might occur, um, please email me at hello at woolentwine.com. I'm also going to link that below. And until then, I guess I hope you enjoyed this little video and that you feel inspired by the patterns that I just suggested for this yarn. And yeah, I guess speak to you very soon. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.